Happy Thursday. The weekend is oh so close, but too bad crypto never sleeps. I'm your host Andrew, and we have a plethora of stories to share today. Make sure you don't duck out before the end, as we believe that all news stories are created equal. Today, we're going to talk about another crypto exchange hack, this time in Japan. Next, the operator of a cryptocurrency mixing service has pleaded guilty to charges that could land him in prison for 20 years. And finally, back to glorious Nippon as Coinbase launches in Japan. First up, unfortunately, more hacking in the crypto world, as Japanese exchange Liquid has reported that more than $90 million was stolen on August 18th. On August 19th, The Liquid Global official Twitter account detailed six Ethereum wallets and one Bitcoin, one XRP, and one Tron wallet that had received $90.6 million in looted funds, the majority of it in Ether and 68 separate Ethereum ERC-20 tokens. The hack has resulted in Liquid transferring assets from its warm wallets into cold wallets just to ensure that no further funds could be removed. Warm wallets in this case are intended to provide an additional layer between internet-connected hot wallets and offline cold wallets. By being offline, cold wallets are technically impervious to internet-based thievery. The hack itself appears to have been directly unrelated to the blockchain or proprietary technology from Liquid. In fact, it appears that the hacker was able to gain access by transferring control of Liquid's major domains through their hosting provider, GoDaddy. According to CEO Mike Kayamori, quote, This gave an actor the ability to change DNS records and in turn take control of a number of internal email accounts. In due course, the malicious actor was able to partially compromise our infrastructure and gain access to document storage. This also means that the hacker could access users' email addresses, encrypted passwords, names, API keys, and possibly images of government-issued IDs. If you did have an account with Liquid, it is strongly recommended to change passwords and to FA credentials. Given that this hack occurred due to domain transfer and document digging, it's unlikely that this particular hacker was wearing a white hat. Unlike the $612 million hack for the Poly Network last week, this one may not have such a happy ending. We have a full list of Bitcoin and Ethereum addresses associated with the hack in our full article on Alexandria, if any internet sleuths want to take a look. For our second story, the operator of a darknet crypto mixing service has pleaded guilty to money laundering, a charge that could land him in jail for 20 years. As a primer for what mixing services are, since blockchain ledgers are fully public, launderers need to get creative with how to hide their funds. Mixing or tumbling services work by pulling together source funds from multiple inputs for a large and random period of time, and then spitting them back out to destination addresses. As all the funds are lumped together and then distributed at random times, it can be very difficult to trace exact coins. Akron, Ohio resident Larry Dean Harmon has pleaded guilty to running such mixing services on the dark net that obfuscated the source and ownership of more than $300 million worth of Bitcoin associated with illegal activities. Between 2014 and 2017, Harmon ran both Helix and Grams, a dark net search engine, while also working with dark net markets Alphabay, Evolution, and Cloud9, among others. These markets sold illegal drugs, false and stolen IDs, hacking tools, and guns, among other contraband. In addition to prison, the feds also seized 4,400 bitcoins worth some $200 million and other property. The money laundering conspiracy charges also come with a fine of 500,000 or up to, quote, twice the value of the property involved in the transaction, unquote. Since Harmon helped launder bitcoins, then worth more than $300 million, that could be a substantial fine indeed. In addition, the Treasury Department's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, FinCEN, fined Harmon $60 million last October for violating the Bank Secrecy Act. 
Harmon is also the CEO of Bitcoin news site Coin Ninja and founder of crypto wallet Dropbit. As we've reported in previous stories, the crypto crackdown continues worldwide. It seems that authorities are becoming more and more privy to methods being used to launder money and propagate illegal transfers of funds. I'm sure we'll have more news on similar stories very soon. And for our third and final story, some lighter news, as Coinbase launches its crypto exchange in Japan. Founded in 2012, CEO Brian Armstrong's exchange boasts more than 68 million customers and operates in more than 100 countries. It is currently tied for second place on the CoinMarketCap exchange score leaderboard. Along with trade volume, average liquidity, and web traffic, the metric also assesses how reliable an exchange's numbers are. Despite numerous worldwide authorities cracking down with regulation on other large exchanges, Coinbase has long focused on complying with all regulators in each market it serves. Approved in June, the Nasdaq-listed firm announced that they have partnered with Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group, MUFG, one of the largest banks in Japan with over 40 million Japanese customers. This allows Coinbase to make MUFG quick deposit available from day one. It will, quote, help millions of people in Japan access our platform quickly and begin trading on our exchange, the company said. Coinbase Japan intends to begin with five top assets aimed at retail customers, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Stellar, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash with more to be added in the coming months. Overall, good news for Japanese crypto fans, as more exchange options are a good thing. And speaking of good things, all good things must come to an end. That about does it for our news today. If you've enjoyed these news summaries and learned something, throw us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do this every day. If you want to learn more about any of our stories or are just curious about crypto in general, go ahead and ask Alex in the description below. I've been your host, Andrew, and we'll see you tomorrow.